Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Wedding Dress Throw 11 and says, My husband's friend made me uncomfortable at our wedding. Last weekend, my husband, 27 male, and I, 30 female, got married. It was a great wedding and I had a great time leading up to it. There's only been one thing that's left a sour taste in my mouth. Growing up, I always wanted a big princess wedding. I know some people see those as tacky and immature, but it was always my dream. As part of this, the theme for our wedding was ballroom. I told everyone to wear the nicest things they owned and told the women in particular to try to outshine me. I even went as far as telling the married women to wear their wedding dresses. I didn't care about being outdressed. Instead, all I wanted was to fulfill the aesthetic in my head that I had for the wedding, which included everyone else looking nothing less than extravagant. And no, before people ask, I don't regret my decision. It was really special to see my mum, aunt and bridesmaids all in their own dresses on my big day. It kind of felt like they were passing the torch on to me and I really enjoyed the experience. Now onto my husband's friend. My husband has this friend I'll call Kate, 27 female. Kate is my husband's childhood friend and first love. My husband comes from a small town and the majority of his friends he's known since adolescence. In their senior year of high school, Kate and my husband got engaged, which is kind of normal where they are from but called off the wedding and never went through with it. It was mutual. They felt they were growing up too fast and wanted to slow down. The calling off the wedding was the end of the relationship, but they stayed friends. I knew this information prior to getting with my husband and never had a problem or felt jealous because I'm friends with a few exes myself. In fact, two of them were invited to our wedding. One was my bridesmaid, I'm bisexual, and the other was invited as a guest along with his current girlfriend. I've never had a problem with Kate being my husband's ex, but I had a problem with Kate as a person as she's kind of bitchy and gossips like she's still in high school. A few examples of this are just a month into our relationship. She confessed to my husband she still had some lingering feelings too, which he responded they had already tried that and it didn't work. If she brought it up again, he would have to cut her off out of respect for me. I wasn't that mad at the time because I understood that they had a long history my relationship with him was just starting out and she owed it to herself to see if there was anything still there before it was too late. However, after she was turned down, her attitude towards me changed to fake nice and started calling me things like cougar or asking me how I expected to make a relationship work as I want to be an anesthesiologist, which would require long hours or telling my husband's whole friend group how she doesn't like my loud personality. And when I confronted her about all those things, she would say, uh, oh, it was just a joke, or you're so loud, I felt like you would just go off. There's more shit, but if I typed it all, I would never get to the point. Kate has her own husband, I'll call Gerald. Kate and Gerald both make average in terms of finances, as they are both teachers. Kate kindergarten and Gerald seniors. They got married last year. On a teacher's salary, Kate wasn't able to afford the most luxurious wedding dress out there but I always had the impression she was happy with it. Kate does have another wedding dress from when she was going to marry my husband that her dad paid for, who has unfortunately passed now, which in terms of fanciness is a bit nicer, but obviously she didn't wear that dress to her own wedding. I was expecting Kate to wear the wedding dress she wore to her own wedding to our wedding, but when I looked and saw her, she had the wedding dress she was supposed to wear when she was getting married to my husband. When I saw her, I immediately went, what the fuck, but decided to just drop it because I didn't want a conflict on our wedding day. My husband, however, was also confused on why she wore that one and asked her about it without me even having to tell him I was uncomfortable. She responded, well, your wife wanted such a big princess wedding. I thought I'd wear this one because it follows the theme more. Don't tell me she's upset about it. She's the one who said, come in your nicest clothes and this is my nicest dress. I feel like I'm not allowed to be upset, even though I am. And I know this is my fault, but the whole thing has left a really bad taste in my mouth. I would have never been okay with her wearing that one if I'd known she was going to. I feel like she should have asked. I 
keep telling myself it's not that big of a deal. And during the daytime, when I'm distracted, I don't even think about it. But I've always been a night owl. And it makes me shitty every time I think about it before I fall asleep. So now I'm here complaining on Reddit like a loser. I feel pathetic. So there were some additional questions on this, which gave a bit of additional information, which because OP replied to it. So no intention asks, I just need to ask why your husband is still friends with her. She doesn't respect you. I will never be friends with someone who treats my partner like that. You should be mad at her. She's a bad person, in fact. But why is your husband accepting that? You should be mad at him. OP responds saying most of the stuff she did was at the beginning of our relationship. We've been together five years which did lead to my husband having a talk with her about not being friends anymore. She said she was sorry she offended me and didn't realize I didn't have their, referring to his friend group, sense of humor. He said that maybe the things she says just aren't funny. And once she said that, it only reinforced his decision to cut her off because he said, even now, you can't just say sorry. It's always I'm sorry, but, which shows you aren't sincere. It was really awkward because she was friends with all his friends and we still saw her around, but he would just hold my hand and ignore her. That lasted about a year until she got with Gerald and she finally gave a sincere, or at least what I thought was sincere, apology and said that she realized after getting with Gerald, who is the love of her life, how upset she would have been if the roles were reversed and asked for another chance of us all being friends. Despite my better judgment, I agreed and while the comments aren't so directly rude anymore, Sometimes her tone towards me sounds like she thinks I'm dumb or I feel like there's a double meaning to her words. I've noticed she's kind of a bitch to all their friends though and they've accepted it as part of her personality. I've been feeling like I'm going crazy for a while because she hasn't said anything directly rude but after reading these comments, I'm going to have a conversation with my husband about it tomorrow. Snoo Word says, Hugs, husband should be the one to end this friendship. She has overstepped enough. Now, what you should have said to her husband. I'm surprised she kept the dress that she was going to wear originally to marry my husband to our wedding. Laugh it off. She isn't worth the thought that she wrecked anything on your wedding day. If she brings it up, tell her at least she finally got to wear it to your wedding and walk away. OP responds saying, I did ask her that when I saw her the first time. She said she kept it because it was the last really nice thing her dad bought for her before he passed. She was 19 when he died. Rural Life says, how did you know just by looking at her that it was the dress she had bought to marry before you had even met your husband? Opie says, I've answered this twice in other comments, but basically I saw the high school one in her closet once. We were invited to her wedding last year and I remember what her dress looked like. Not to mention we took a shit ton of photos. And three, when my husband confronted her, even if I hadn't realized it on my own, I would have realized it then. And a couple more comments before we move on. Meg Mellon says, first off, let me just say I absolutely love the approach you took. Encouraging all the women in your life to actually wear their own wedding dress to your own wedding because you wanted them to feel as beautiful as possible. And the whole, I feel like they were passing the torch. Seriously, fucking beautiful. This is so healthy, I can't even handle it. On to your feels. You have a right to feel like this. Kate definitely has issues and was obviously projecting, but hey, in the end, you got the guy, so joke's on her. I feel bad for Gerald, though. That must have cut him more than it did you. Your husband made a good choice. You're a better woman than her, and I hate comparing women, so that's a huge compliment. ST says she is doing what is called malicious compliance. Yes, technically, she is following your rules, but it was hurtful and in bad taste. A kind person would never consider wearing that dress to your wedding. Someone who respected you would never have done that to you or your husband. She is drama, drama, drama. Luckily, seems like your husband knows she is, which is why he was never interested in her after he matured a little bit. But hopefully, behavior like this will help him see that he doesn't really want a friend like that either. I'll start doing a drift away from her as a couple for you and your husband's peace of mind. And pretty much, sum up from really quickly for me, a lot of the comments said it. She's pretty much overstayed her welcome in your lives now and it's time to just completely cut her off but the update says hello guys here's the update so i talked to my husband about it this morning when i brought it up he immediately let out a sigh of relief he said i don't know how to bring it up because you didn't seem bothered but when i saw her in that dress i thought it was very weird she wore that one he went on to say that he even considered asking her to leave because he thought it was rude 
but because I had no reaction to the dress, he thought I either didn't care or didn't recognize it. But either way, if I wasn't bothered, he didn't want to disturb my peace of mind by kicking her out. We discussed and he's going to have a talk with her, not just about the dress, but her treatment of me in general and explained that going forward, she will not be a friend in our lives. After this talk, I've decided to let it go and focus on my new marriage. This was a small thing. And now, after I've talked it out with my husband, I feel kind of silly I let it bother me this much. I'm at peace, she will no longer be in our lives and that's enough for me. Someone said you gave her the chance to wear the dress her dad got her and gave her a gift. That was kind of a huh, moment for me because no matter what her intentions were, that is true. I'm glad she got to have that moment. End of update. The rest of this is just answering questions and explaining what the wedding looked like. A common asked question is, how did we even know what the dress looked like? I said it a few times in the comments, but I've seen it a couple of times before in a closet. Usually when my husband's friend group hangs out, the guys all get ready at one of their places and the girls get ready at one of our places. Then we all meet up to wherever we're going, whether that's a pub crawl or a concert or a music festival, etc. Kate hosts pretty regularly and it's during those times that I've seen it in her closet while she looks for something to wear. When she got married to Gerald, she put her other wedding dress right next to the high school one. As for my husband, I asked him about that today. And he said when they broke up, Kate asked if he wanted to see the dress since there was no point in hiding it anymore. And he said yes. And then when they told their friends the news, the friends also wanted to see the dress. So she put it on for them too. On to pictures. I'm not going to post any, but I will explain how it looked for all of you who wanted to know. So firstly, lots of people showed up in wedding dresses and that was absolutely beautiful. One thing my friends from college did was do a 50s Marilyn Monroe type glam and it was killer. One of the staff was able to find a red carpet and we took a bunch of black and white photos of them. I had about, <laughs> I had about five girls wear their, oh, the words come back to haunt me. <laughs> I had about five girls wear their Kinthe dresses, which was gorgeous. <laughs> I still feel like I absolutely butchered that one, but... Finally, some parents dressed their little girls up in actual princess costumes, which I thought was really cute. The guys also dressed really well too. One did in a sequin tux. Quite a few went for a rock star type suit. My husband's best man went for this really gorgeous red velvet tux. And my dress was this really shimmery, really poofy ball gown type dress with a flower design on the veil that I got custom made for me. Then I had it designed where I could actually unattach the poofy part of the dress the reception and then by doing that it turned into this long sleek white shimmery dress with a leg slit then op talks about what her dress was like it says the one she wore was a champagne colored lacy not necessarily sexy or anything but had a lot of lace v-neck dress with a collar I'm not sure really how to explain it with a track that had roses stitched into the design that was champagne colored like her dress i don't know if i did a good job explaining but it's very pretty in person Damn, that wedding sounds badass. That guy with a sequin tux, the gorgeous red velvet tux. It just made me think, oh, I'd love to be a part of that wedding. I can finally get me like a, a blue velvet jacket with a big flavor flav clock. I'll be living my dream. <laughs> but now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And this next story came from Anxiety Killed the Cat and said, help me be a good mother-in-law. My son and his wife had a baby on Valentine's Day. A mum came out for the birth. It ended in a C-section after all. So my sweet daughter-in-law is healing from a C-section and trying to be a super mum. I fly out to them next week and I want to be as supportive as possible. How can I tell her to go the F to sleep without hurting her feelings? I want to gently guide both of them and not be bossy or tell them what to do. It's so hard navigating what I know of being a mum and trying to be sensitive to them as first time parents. Baby also has tongue tie and while they wait to get that fixed, she has to pump at every feeding. She's got to be worn out. Mamas, tell me how to be a good mother-in-law. Thank you. Editing to add for clarity. My son texts me this morning asking if I could do some overnights when I come out. A mum either isn't offering or my daughter-in-law isn't asking and is trying to do it alone. He said she is getting almost no sleep at night and this is not sustainable. I want her to sleep, heal, bond with baby. I just want to hear what was helpful to you, what words were encouraging and how I can support her without taking over. 
Edit 2, you are the best. The best of the best. Mommet, I love you. Each and every one of you. This is a hard task and you're out here mumming every day. As a mum with a grown, blown, married, new dad son, I barely remember the haze of the early years. Now all I remember are the golden moments, some of our struggles that were growth opportunities for me and so much joy. Someday, when you are the mother-in-law, be the mother-in-law you needed. I try to be the very best for my son and daughter-in-law. To change this dynamic of an overbearing, unhelpful, difficult, exhausting presence to one of mutual love and respect. Thank you for helping me become that person. Edit 3. I just got off the phone with my son. He was able to call on his way home from work. He is an electrical lineman and has been working 16 to 18 hour days in his first week back due to a recent tornado. I listened to him talk about all the things going well, the rough spots and how he wants to be a good support to his wife. Then I told him all the things you have said here. I'm following their lead. They are the parents and I am the support. I asked him to teach me how to wash the pump parts when I get there and show me where and how baby things are organized. I told him I want to cook a lot of food, have fresh fruit and veggies on hand and do the burping, diaper changes and middle of the night waking around so they can sleep. I will cook and clean and fade into the background so they can figure out their lives with this little human they created. He thanked me and sounded so relieved. So thanks again, Mamet. You saved the day. You saved me. You have saved my relationship with my son and daughter-in-law by preventing me from being an ass if a mother-in-law slash mum. I'm taking everything you have said to heart and I will apply it. And we do have an update to this story as well, but I wanted to read this one because, you know, we cover so many stories where, you know, mother-in-laws and stuff like that can be absolute nightmares. Because of the types of stories they are, often we're going to see a lot of negative stuff all the time. So I think it's really nice to see someone who's asking how they can be the support, listening to the comments and then trying to apply what they've heard. Not trying to take over their lives, not trying to force them to do this and that, but like they said, just fade into the background, be the support that they needed. And I think it's absolutely wonderful to listen to. But OP did reply and says, Hi, Mummy, I was here a few weeks ago asking for advice on helping out my son and daughter-in-law during my visit after their son was born via C-section. I arrived 24 hours ago and I think I washed bottle and pump parts 100 times. I also sweat while she slept and my son ran a few errands. We all went to Costco together to find appealing foods for mum and I ran other errands for them while they had time together. I paid for all of it despite my son protesting. We have folded about seven loads of laundry. Three of them had approximately 97 tiny pieces of human clothing. At least that's what it felt like. My son and I changed the sheets on their bed, made dinner together while my daughter-in-law fed baby. The schedule is that I will go to bed by 10 p.m. and be up with the baby after 6 a.m. Mum and dad will sleep until they wake up. Mum is pumping and baby is bottle fed due to tongue and lip tie. That will be revised soon so I can cover one to two feedings until she absolutely has to pump. I might do some night support of packaging up milk and washing bottle bits this week when my son goes back to work. I've offered, they can decide if they want that help. My son is showing me the ropes and correcting me when I don't get something right. I'm asking, would you like me to do this or that? Insert help options here. When daughter-in-law asked me to do something like help her bathe baby. I text my husband and told him to order a Roomba so they can stop sweeping the floor. I'm sitting in a rocking recliner with my grandson on my chest while my son and daughter-in-law shower together. It's been their routine for a few years. Listening to them talk and laugh makes me feel like they're going to be fine. These first few weeks are so hard on new parents, but they're going to make it. Baby laughs in his sleep. His hair is curly when wet, but sticks straight out when dry. Changing his diaper is like wrestling a greased alligator. <laughs> and I've been peed on twice. Classic. My son and I was christened. <laughs> and I'll know when I've been baptized. It's only day one and it feels like it was 768 hours long. Thank you for all the beautiful advice. I'm hearing you in my mind. You're still guiding my actions and words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Edited to add, I handled my first blowout. Mum and dad left. I run errands and baby is snoozing next to me. I'm so sorry that many of you mums don't have good mums slash mother-in-law situations. It breaks my heart. Truly, my mum and I aren't super close. Major personality differences and live in different states. But it wasn't always what was best for me. 
but she had dropped everything and showed up when I need her. I guess I thought that's what people do when they love each other. We may not like each other at times, but we do love each other. For those of you that hope to be a good mother-in-law someday, just remember that you love your child. If you believe in and trust them to make good decisions as they age, they will choose a good partner. Choosing my son means choosing his wife. Loving my son means loving his wife. And when you decide to love someone and make it a verb, an action, a choice, loving them becomes easy. I've actually told my son if his wife wants to get up and make her own scrambled eggs, she can. If she wants to move around and be inside her own body, taking care of her own needs, he doesn't need to force her to sit. And she thanked me. I'm constantly checking in with her that his obnoxious humor isn't too much, that I don't need to straighten him out. <laughs> I hope we all grow up to be better people than the examples we have had, that we don't treat each other the way we were treated and call it a rite of passage. We don't have to perpetuate injustices we have received. We can build deeper, more loving relationships by choosing not to engage in the petty, lazy, or selfish behaviors we have witnessed. I've always said, love only multiplies, it doesn't divide. It shouldn't subtract, it adds. Love grows and grows. And when we add people to our lives, if we nurture it, tend it like a garden, weed out resentment and fear, fertilize with laughter, hope and joy, we will reap a bountiful harvest of love in return. The love we receive becomes love we can share. Go forth and multiply your love today. Even if that means not strangling a partner or drop kicking your difficult child into next week, <laughs> that's a form of love. That's a form I'd love too. Those bloody onion ninjas are out in force again today. Holy moly. What a lovely story. But now I'm going to turn it to you guys. What do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending your time here today. Your love, time and support always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for what you do. Truly, it's amazing. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.